everybody. Thanks for stopping back by Wild Bird Creative. I have a page of sheet music that I just decorated with some Brousseau pigments. And I did it through a stencil, so I have a nice pattern, a nice variety of colors. I love the notes in the background. This is going to be a really quick journal page because this part is already done. But what I've got is my Sean Petit background words stencil. And I'm just going to add some text to this. Now this is a stencil that I use a fair amount just because it not only adds text, it also adds interest. So even if it isn't totally readable, or if I decide to stencil it backwards, upside down, whichever, it just ends up adding a little bit of texture to the page. You do have to apply some pressure to really get it into all the little nooks and crannies of the type. There we go, just a little bit of detail. Let's do some down here at the bottom. Again, it's not the words that I'm going for. It's just the interest. Let's see, let's do some along this edge too. And you can flip it over after you have some paint on here and then you end up with a nice reverse print, which is great for if you're trying to fill an area that really needs some impact. I'm just going along here. I've got Daisy the studio cat, so if you hear some meowing, that's her putting in her two cents worth. She probably wants to leave after insisting that she come in here. She's very nosy. There we go. And I think I will continue. Let's see, let me just get that in line. And just come right up to the corner with it. little bit more in that empty spot. So you can see it just makes a nice little bit of lettering interest. I'm going to come down here too. I like to get things on the edges. Make sure that there's interest all over. Let's see, get some here. This is a great stencil because of the size. You can lift it up. You can hold it really steadily. Okay, now I've got other stencils on here that I'm also going to use. And again, it's the same thing. I'm just going in and just adding detail. I mean, I already had this great background that I made. And now I've just got some different sections of text on top of it. So it's not just the two layers. It's now got three. Now, one thing that's nice is this will dry quickly because it is a pretty thin layer of paint. 
And I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Let me put this to soak. Let me let the cat out and I'll be right back. Okay, Daisy has gone on her way to do whatever it is that interests her. I have my archival ink coffee stamp pad here and one of the Tim Holtz fragment stamps. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit here in the middle. Again, it's not gonna be very heavy. I want it to be quite light. Just come right over to the corner there. And one here. There. You can't go wrong. There we go. Just, just having fun. And I'll hold it up so that you can see just that delicate detail. And I could have done it in any color and it would have been fine, but I wanted it to be fairly muted. Okay, let me put this to soak, close this up, set it aside, and then I've got my scrap or my sketchbook here, my art journal, and this fits right into the page. So what I'm going to do is get my big glue stick, go all the way around the edges, and then fill in the middle. And I'm even going to come the other way too, just to make sure that I've got a good coat. And I could put this upside down if I wanted, but I'm just going to keep this right reading. And just doesn't have to be centered, so to speak. Roll this right out. I want it really to adhere. Okay, there we are. Oh, I love how that looks. Now I got a huge sheet of rice paper from Dick Blick. And this is one of the details that I cut out of it. And I just, I saw the paper and I was just wowed. So I think, I think I want it on that side. Now this is quite a delicate paper. So I'm going to use my matte medium going to put it on here and get, let's see, I want a brush that's going to be able to be maneuvered carefully. I really don't want to tear this paper at all. And if I put the medium on here, those pigments will start to run and that's not the look I'm going for. So this is just going to be a go slow and steady. Work my way out to the edges. Oh, see there, I got it flipped over on itself. That's okay. And then get a little bit more for down here. Just work it out. Oh, see, now that's getting a little tear in it, so I need to come back in this direction. Okay, let me lay this aside. Pick this up. And let's lay it right like this. And then I'll come in with my brush. Let me slide this over and get this out of the way. 
and just make sure that it is down. Again, just slow and steady. This is not going to be something that you whip through before you go meet the bus or in the 10 minutes before you head to work because you don't want, you don't want to tear it. You don't want it to wrinkle up. But look how beautiful that is. Oh, and this came in a big, big sheet. I mean, I think it was almost three feet by four feet, to be honest with you. Okay, but look how bold that is on there. Cover everything up again and decide what needs to be done next? Go around the edges one more time before I put the brush to soak. I'll hold it up so that you can really get a look at it. I mean, it almost disappears, but you can see the weave of the paper. It lays nice and flat. It's very, very lightweight, which is something that I think is fabulous. But now I think we need something over here. Let me, let me take a look around quickly and see what, what I want to put over here. Okay, I have a Stencil Girl product stencil here. Uh, S691. And I'm going to use, just to add, again, a little bit of interest, nothing, nothing too much. Get a little more paint on there. I just want a very light detail playing across the page. See how light that is? It's just perfect. I'm going to keep coming in here. And I'm letting it taper off into gray as I go. I'm not doing solid coverage. That way it ends up working more like the stamps did, where they were just a little bit of detail. Get a little bit more on here. working on a piece, you'll notice the areas where you want to add something and the areas that you want to leave alone. Just comes with time. Like right here. Let's line that back up and just get some interest right in there. Let me come in very light handed here. And I don't mind, I'm gonna go right up to those circles because they have that nice black edge and then it just works right in. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's 
is one of my favorite stencils because of the fine details. They always look lovely. And if you have enough paint on it, you can flip it over and you get a nice reverse print. There. Now, I think that is done except for some just scribble writing, just doing some mark making. Nothing fancy, just an additional layer. And you'll notice I'm holding Mr. Billow by the very tip. And over here, I think I'll come right across the top. I also have my colored pencils. And maybe I'll do some in red just to add a little more color. A little more black. And there we go. I think that's done. I'm not even going to add a word to this or anything. And I like it. It could be framed in any direction, but for now it's going to live in my art journal just as an experiment using that new paper I got with the pigments. And I like the way they both work. I like the way they work together. I hope that you'll get your supplies out and make something amazing. Thanks for stopping by Wild Bird Creative.